if anyone wants to get into the insurance industry today, I'm going to say it. You could fucking play this, record it, cut it up, chop it up. Worst time to get into the fucking business. You will not last. Wow. It, you won't, won't last. If you make it through this. Won't last. <clears throat> won't last. Only people who are going to make it through this are people who have portfolios of clients already. You're going to come in. You're going to write order on home. Don't waste your fucking time. Go bag groceries and Target and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> All right, let's ride. <laughs> Today we have the insurance goat. Yeah, baby. Jude motherfucking Romano, let's baby. Go. Let's, let's go. go. Baby. We're allowed to curse on this? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Hey, listen, I mean? we go to church on Sunday, we tell Father God we're sorry for all our sins, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sean, you probably got a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm going to have to go for a couple Sundays in a row. <laughs> No, you'll be just fine. God yeah. will love you no matter what, John. Yeah. I mean, he loves you, so. That's true. <laughs> listen, listen. I just saw a video with you talking about proverbs, so we better not fucking curse you. <laughs> I said, when did this guy become Father Dave? <laughs> proverbs or pronouns? Uh, which one was it? Jude, dude, it's such a pleasure to have you. We've been trying to get you on the pod for a long time. Uh, I'm sorry that you had a flat tire on your way to Newark, but uh, we are very, very happy that you're here. Thank yeah, you. thank you, man. Thank you. I love all you guys, all handsome fellas. You look like you all dressed up very nice to me, except for you. This, yeah. this fucking kid looks like a, ga a Gap father, yeah, like tired. a my father. Well, you got, the, dressed gap. You you got the, white, the white sneaker, yeah. man. No, no, nah, nah, John, John, John. Listen, when you have John's money, you don't have to get dressed up, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Jude, oh my for God. the audience, just just give us a little background: who you are, what you do, where you come from. All right, so there's the politically correct version, you know. Hi, my name is Jude Romano. I spent 15 years in fight. Or there's the, I'm Jude Romano. I'm the motherfucking insurance goat. Let's go. <laughs> A lot of people out there claiming to be an insurance broker. Everyone always says, Jude, and this is real, sorry. Everyone always says, Jude, uh, you're an insurance business. You know this guy, Michael Smith, that just went. I said, no, I don't know. And I said, what do you mean you don't know? I said, I don't know him. They said, oh, well, he's pretty big. I said, that's fucking great for him. I only know one insurance guy, it's Jude Romano. And and frankly speaking, just to kind of peel that back a little bit, um, tunnel vision, man. I don't focus on anybody else. That's that's the reality of it. It's not that I think I'm better than anyone. I can't focus on the guy down the block. I don't know who the fuck he is. Right. right? So here we are. That's it. In a rough industry. But we're still fuck we're still number one. That's it. You know? Always wow. always and forever. Go. So so, so, Jude, obviously, you know, we know what you do. You're the insurance goat. You handle all different types of insurance for our viewers. Give, like, a little background of how you got into the business, maybe what you did to get started, and at what point, you know, did you jump to, you know, starting your own shop? Yeah, man. So, so I, I worked at J.P. Morgan, I think, almost 15 years. I was in finance. I outgrew my role. Um, they changed a bunch of things up, and I was like, wow, this, this sucks. So, um I guess, you know, it was my calling to say, okay, it's time to do some. So I started to think of lucrative industries that could pay me not once, but over and over for my efforts. And so after a lot of research, I thought insurance was a really good alignment, especially it, it was is pretty close in the field of what I was doing. Um, and when I was at JP Morgan, I was a commercial banker. So I already understood the business side of working with business clients and I thought it was a good field where I can get a very good jump start based off uh, some of the relationships I had. Um, and so I started my practice in 2017. Fast forward to take the boring insurance conversation away. Um, I started realizing that a lot of people just take their name and they become Libretti Agency. They become Choi Insurance Brokerage. And I thought that everyone was just uh, extremely typical in the insurance business and it was very boring. So um, I said, how do I spice the industry up a little bit? And so that's when the insurance go was, was created uh, from branding perspective to kind of just align and talk with the people that we work with today, right? And just to have a, a talking piece and say, all right, this guy's not just any insurance guy. He's funny. He's doing great things. He's got a sexy, attractive name. And, and so, <laughs> so I think for me, the core focus is marketing. Right, because anyone, anyone could do any kind of business. Right, we could do real estate, mortgage, insurance. How do you market yourself? Mm -hmm. And for me, I think if you understand how to become an expert marketer, no matter what business you're in, 
you will do very, very good. That's my that's my real firm feeling. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you are your brand. Whenever I hear of you or I hear the term insurance code, I think of this one video you posted at your birthday party. You had fucking goats at your birthday party. Yeah, yeah. So that was yeah. that was Sick. and you were shooting the the, the, the CO two yeah, gun. Yeah, he had goats. I think I think it was the common one here. But we were at, I think we were in Mykonos or something. Yes, I yes, yeah. I, yes, I think that's correct. I think, yeah, it's same with Matt, but... um, I, I remember you were telling us, and you're like, I'm going to have goats, it's going to be the crazy... I, I didn't know you at the time, it was like the first time I met you. Right. Like, this guy's fucking nuts, like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got goats at his fucking yeah. board. And then I saw the video, I was like, holy shit, he did it. <laughs> you know what, man, what's, at, what's actually great about even us just chatting about this right now is... um. Uh, the experience, right? So, you know, you could do a lot of for- great things for your 40th birthday. You can go away to Vegas with a bunch of guys, girls, your wife, you, whatever. But, um, you know, memories uh, last for a long time. So uh, for years, people will talk about that party, including my wife and my family and I. So I'm not upset. so many people could I'm say. I'm upset that I didn't get the invite. You probably sure. didn't know him at the time. Sure. This was, this was what, a year ago or two? Uh, it's no, it's, it's well, it's going on two years, two years, it's not two years yet. Well, I'll be 42 in September, but like to Eric's point, I think, I think I was just becoming acquainted with you fellas mm. at that point. I mean, obviously I, I knew Matt and I think I met all of you through Matt. Right? Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I mean, I stumble across this, this kid sometimes. He's like in one of these restaurants in Monmouth County. He's just, always somewhere. You know, I'm always somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Walking around. Yeah. <laughs> I get a drink coming out. You know, like, it's from that guy over there. <laughs> so and then you gotta, like, you gotta stand yeah. all the way up. Yeah. So you yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. who? That guy down there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, John, he's always out with a group of seven, eight girls. <laughs> and everyone's like, how's this guy with seven, eight girls? Don't okay. expose him on the pod. Yeah. Dude, was I was just ta- we were just talking about you at the gym today. Who? Me, Luke, and Bobbin. And Bobbin's like, that guy, John, he's an animal. Yeah, he's always he's always doing something. He's always got girls around. I'm like, we call him the short king of New Jersey for a reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> short king, baby. <laughs> you got a silver tongue like I've never heard before in my <laughs> life. It's it's incredible. Hopefully, so, we can apply it to business. You do, you dirty dog. You do. <laughs> <laughs> so five years in the business, Jude. Six, seven, seven, seven. Oh, twenty seven, twenty seven, twenty seventeen, and today seven. Yeah, yeah we just wow. we hit seven. Yeah. I got I got a, I got a question. This is a. A boring insurance question, but my buddy does insurance. He does really well. And one thing that I always thought was super interesting is the renewal aspect of the insurance. So if you sell a policy, right, you keep making money. How does that all work for, you know, maybe people that are trying to get an insurance? They're not really sure where to go. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, you know how there's that expression that people saying this is relative for any business. Oh, must be nice, right? Like I walk into this building I see all these beautiful offices you guys have in these different segments and brands. And immediately in my head, I'm, I'm like, must be nice. And then you and I had a private conversation when I walked in, and it, it's one entrepreneur to an, on another understanding the cost of doing business, right? So, um, but to answer your question, uh, a guy on the mortgage side will tell me in a bad time, oh, insurance business is great. You get yeah. renewals, right? That's what a mortgage guy is saying to an insurance guy today, because instead of doing 10 deals, he's doing three deals. Okay, so let me peel it back for you a little bit. I'm gonna give you the worst case scenario. There's also a best case scenario. Worst case scenario, um, you get a client who buys a home. The premium for the year is 2,200. Your commission is 10%, $220. So naturally, you gotta write a lot of those policies to make some good money. How many times do you touch that client per year for the $220? Well, if it's a good client, you don't talk to them much. Well, then you made money, you moved it quick, right? It's a volume-based business. If that client calls you once a month, Jude, my blinds fell. Is this covered? Uh, Jude, my there's water coming in my window. Is, is this covered? Well, well, then the whole conversation of, well, it's a residual and you get paid on it every year, it's irrelevant. Right. Right, because as a business owner, you have to equate how much time do you allocate to how much money you make. Yes, mm-hmm. so it's a very simple mathematics uh, equation here. Um, so I think if you monitor 
the insurance business closely on the type of clientele that you work with, how much you make on the client, how much time you spend with the client. I think it could be very lucrative. But I think for someone to say, like, well, I got these five or ten auto policies and 30 home policies and I made X and I'm going to make it for the rest of my life. The answer is absolutely fucking not. They could cancel in six months and they get a call from another insurance guy who saved them $300. And they're like, oh, goodbye, Jude. Nice. You made nothing. You made cock. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, you know, I think, look, I think it, I think it's a beautiful business. I think you just have to be very hyper focused on who you work with and how you allocate your time. Because I can promise you this, for someone who doesn't know the business and doesn't know how to move, um, you, you, you could end up in a really bad place, right? You could end up spending a lot of time and not making a lot of money. And I've, and I've been very conscious on sharing this with people in my recent months. And this is applicable to mortgage, insurance, real estate, doesn't matter. There are people out there who can be a good real estate agent, a good mortgage banker, a good insurance broker. It doesn't mean they're a good businessman, mm. right? If you could be a top top producing realtor and you could sell, you know, 70 houses a year, if you don't know how to run a business, you're not a businessman. Yeah. And it doesn't make you a you're bad a person. Just, yeah. You got to understand your lane. Yeah. Maybe you're just meant to be a very high level employee and that's okay. You'll make a shit ton of money. But I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm an insurance pr broker and they automatically assume they're a businessman. No, you're not. Even know you're, you're sitting in fucking Starbucks writing policies, right? Right. That's my observation. I, I say this just because I know what it took from day one till present. You know, I was the guy running around with a laptop in Starbucks, right? And then and then it came to a point where it's like, okay, this is a real business now. Um, you guys know you run you run a very successful business, and you guys are um, extremely committed, right? Do you fucking leave here at 3 o'clock every day and go to the gym and that's the rest of your day? Probably here to 7, 8 o'clock at night. I think I think what you're saying is like a conversation me and Dave have all the time. It's like, you know, if I, if I just went back into sales, bro, and we had no overhead, like we would make so much money and like not have to deal with all this BS, but you don't have a business then. So there's like a trade-off too. Well, the answer is you would. If you and Dave left tomorrow and just went into a sales role, you'll probably make four times. But then you're not following your vision. You're not following your five and ten year and fifteen and twenty year exactly. plan. It's so if you really believe in what you're doing, you're going <laughs> to stick to it. Yes. It's the marshmallow now versus two later kind of kind of situation. Yeah, man. I mean, look, Eric. There's 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 short term thinkers and long term thinkers. Mm -hmm. And if you're a short term thinker, it doesn't make you a bad person. But you could go out there and make a quick transactional hit and make really good money. Right. Right. So how how many people you have on your team now? We have a total of four. Okay. Not including myself, so okay. four. But I'm a producer still. Yep. So we should call it five. I mean, I really focus on like high level commercial, high level life insurance. That's where I really try to spend my time focusing. And then I also spend a lot of time pouring into my team so I can help them become better and stronger and develop every day. So out of those four people, is you have like one or two are business development? Maybe there's a processor. Like, what are the roles? I mean, so I really segmented it over the last six months where I have one person who focuses on commercial. And when I say commercial, you know, certain threshold. If it goes above that, then it essentially should involve me. We have one person who focuses strictly on life. And then we have one person who focuses on personal lines. And then we have one person who kind of oversees the operation, per se, okay. beside me, you know? And uh, it's tough, you know, it's tough because you expect people to operate at the level that you do. Um, and so the only thing you do is hope to pour into them every day and get them as close to, the, to that level that you want them to be. What did that transition feel like when you went from a solopreneur producing and, and driving revenue for yourself to now saying, you know what, I got to build out a team. I got to build a real business. Here. Sucks. Horrible, right? It's the worst fucking <laughs> feeling in the world. Yeah. I, I question myself every day, and I, I know that I would have, you know, just just call it for a conversation, call it a 60%, 70% increase tomorrow if I just said, everyone, have a nice fucking day, nice knowing you, um, goodbye. I, I, I literally crunch these numbers. I mean, that's not the answer, right? So let me just be clear. That's not the answer, depending on what you're looking for. But I did the numbers the other day. With my own self-production and alleviating the team, I can increase my revenue Three times like that. Wow. Right? Because now you're working more efficiently. You know what you're capable of, right? right? So now there's no questioning, did this person do this? Or, you're doing it. Um, and then, you know, the overhead, right? Yeah. 
That's exactly what you said when you came in here. You were like, you got an impressive operation, man. And yeah. the, the, the gut reaction out of my mouth was, yeah, a lot of overhead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, look, it's work, but there's, there's supposed to be a payday at the end of the day or, or, or a bigger vision. I think the other thing that's cool about insurance is eventually you can sell your book, right? It's yeah. Yeah, that's my plan. So I'm 41. Um, I, God willing, I'm going to push for another nine years. It may be less, but nine years is my goal. And I'm out of 50. And people think I'm crazy, but I don't give a fuck what people think because they're small-minded. Mm -hmm. Oh, how are you going to retire at 50? Why not? I determined that. I mean, let's be honest. I determined that. How did I plan? How did I plan with the financials that I brought in for the last 20 years? Mm -hmm. You know, some people are like, oh, you're too young. I mean, I'm not going to retire from not doing anything. I'm just going to retire from the insurance game. Mm -hmm. Package it up. Sell it to some rich man. Here you go. Have a nice fucking day. It's like a portfolio of real estate. It's pretty cool because you have some residuals and then you get basically a return on, on those residuals and you can factor in a certain amount, you know, yeah. will pay off or, or whatever it is. It's typically like, uh, you know, on the low end, I would say four on the high end, eight times, wow. eight times your revenue. But for me, I'm very hyper focused on the brand building that's trademarked in mm -hmm. 50 states, the insurance code trademarked. Um, I know that the brand is extremely attractive to a lot of people in the insurance business. I know it's attractive to people who have a lot bigger pockets than I do. And so my plan is to kind of like Grow spice that, that number up yeah. with the brand packaged in. You follow? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, listen, you know, with God's blessings, that's, that's what will end up happening. What is, what is the number you're hoping to exit at? 30 mil. 30 mil. Yeah. I mean, listen, you guys are numbers guys. So without speaking about my financials at the current moment on air, the trajectory shows that that number will hit if I continue to produce at the level I'm producing today. I'd have to take a really big downslope to not hit that number. You wow. follow? That's incredible. Yeah. As long as you keep your current path. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, listen, not to downplay it, like, I don't, I think it is incredible, but if, and, and if, to take it a step further, I think like if I fast forward nine years and at the age of 50, based on my cost and my lifestyle, what is 30 million worth in nine years versus today? It's probably safe to say maybe 20 million. And if 20 million has to last you from the age of 50 to call it 90, it's not a lot of money. Mm. It's good money. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's not good money, but it's not as much money as someone on the outside might hear and think. Yes. Fair to say. That's yeah. Fair. I mean, I, I think. Uh, what, there might be something wrong with us because we were doing like a five year plan for the our mortgage business, and we did the math and it like same thing like we, we could get to an exit value of like two hundred fifty million in five years if we do everything perfectly, perfectly. And then we're like, is that a lot of money? Like, is two hundred fifty million a lot of money? And it's like, that should be a fucking shitload of money, right? Like, yeah, but in today's yeah. day and age, is two hundred fifty million that much money? Is it thirty million? Yeah. It's a lot. No, it's but but listen. <laughs> Frankly speaking, let's just break it down to what we just said, right? So if if the <coughs> insurance gold sold for th call the number thirty million, and I was fifty, right? Inflation, fast forward ten years, call it twenty million. Taxes, right? Yeah. It's a it's 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 a little shy of a million a year, right? I think t if you make a million a year today, not not in ten years today, I think you make good money. Right. I don't think you make bad money. I don't think you make fuck you money. I think you make good money. Very good money. A million today has almost become a me too salary. Almost. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, 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 is, am I fucked up for saying this? No, no, no. no, no. You agree. put up something the other day, your story yesterday. I shared I it with fucking seven people. I know exactly what it was. Because, bro, it was, was so it? it was so true. It was, and, and I'll tell you what somebody responded to me, and it was so funny. It, it said, uh, some people think 50,000 is a good year. Some people think 50,000 is a bad month. Choose your tribe. Yeah. And I read that. I put, put shit like that on my story all the time, shit I relate to. And somebody, two people responded to my story. One was a kid I grew up with who doesn't really do much with his life. And he said to me, he goes, damn, I couldn't even imagine making 50,000 in a month. And then somebody else responded to my story who owns a super successful uh, like contracting business, a big GC. And he said, if I was making less than 50,000 a month, he's like, there's a humongous problem. Yeah. If we were making less than 50,000 a month, we'd be out of business, we'd be dead. It's yeah. all, it's, <laughs> listen, it's all perception. And actually, you know, I'm, I'm obviously I'm a, a quite a few years ahead of you boys, but what I've, 
really come become more conscious with in the last six to 12 months is not being upset with people who don't see the vision that guys like us see. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I've learned to not become upset with them is because we're not all built the same. Yep. And we definitely need people in that mindset as well, because that's what makes the world move around the way it does. We can't all be leaders. So it's not about thinking someone is not capable or their mind is too small. It's just literally some people who don't. Now, the, th the shit that does piss me off, though, is the people who talk about wanting this big fucking dream but are willing to do fucking zero for Nothing it. for it, yeah. Those mm -hmm. people should fucking lock themselves in a closet and not come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> oh, my God. But, you know, listen, there's no secret formula. You know, I always say be a good person, surround yourself with good people, and good shit happens. Yep. Right? And that's my philosophy. But um, I believe in that. How did you get into restaurant reviews? So so here's where Jude Romano spills a little of his secret sauce, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to spill it. And I'm not scared to spill it with you guys, but I'm going to spill it because when you realize you can't be duplicated, you don't mind sharing your sauce with people. First, yeah. first of all, your videos, I mean. I love your videos. You, you and Dave have something that. If me and him were on the street oh together, my God. we'd be in fucking Hollywood tomorrow. You guys, you guys we'd have be, it. We'd be grabbing our SAG award this year. <laughs> you guys are cartoon characters. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, honestly, you're lucky you're fucking far from me. You'd be joining me every day on the street. <laughs> you, you really should. You should do it. You guys should do it. They should one. do a joint. That would be hilarious. hilarious. I'm gonna be honest with you, and this is this is a very big compliment, and it's not me being me being corny. Sometimes I'm scrolling, and I, I, even though I'm I do a lot of social media stuff, I'm not really on social media a lot. If that makes any sense. But when I do come across Dave's videos, uh, you give me life for my day, brother, if I'm being honest with you. No, you do. Because, <laughs> like, sometimes I'm like, this guy's fucking great. He's great. I, I mean, I feel know? like you guys are the I same. I feel the that. same about him yeah. and you, honestly. Yeah. I'm like, oh, every time I see a Jude video, I'm like, wait, wait, let me, let me stop. What's going no, on? Wait, what here? is this? Yeah, yeah, whoever edits them, too, like, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, thank you so much, man. I mean, so, so, so the social media game is very simple, right? For me, I refuse to go on social media and say, uh, you know, here's five things you need to know about a deductible. Mm. No one <laughs> fucking cares. Can we, can we be honest? Yeah. And even if they did care, they're too fucking dumb to understand. Sorry, <laughs> it's just the reality, right? I'm not going to make a video that says, here's five tips on how to be a safe driver. I would ask Instagram to immediately delete my account if I ever did show. <laughs> so how do you market insurance without being boring? Well, there's no fucking answer to that, right? So... What Jude Romano has decided, I have a really great passion for meeting business owners and entrepreneurs. It, I mean, for God's sakes, it says on my phone, tell your story. This is something that's always been close to my heart. I like when people share their story, where they started, where they are. Mm. You know, um, someone I admire very much who you know is Frankie Brusco mm -hmm. from Gabriella's and Patricia's and all the good stuff. And everyone we're sees going, the guy. We're going to be at Patricia's tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They fucking invite me. Did I get a fucking calendar <laughs> invite? I got this fucking guy asked me five times. You come into the podcast. You think he asked me about Patricia's? Oh, it's it's uh, you can probably come. Yeah. <laughs> no, no I don't take the last line. Of him. No, 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 no. Oh, it's not me. It's just I, 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 it's his fiance's it's birthday. Oh, no, it's not me. I'm taking the heat over here. We're gonna move on. We'll go to Gabriella's afterwards. But the guy Frankie is such a hardworking guy, super impressive guy. But people only see that guy. In the restaurant, dressed nice. Oh, walking around, right, talking you know, to people. Oh, must be. You don't know what that guy. You don't know what the hell he did. That guy doesn't even fucking sleep. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. So that's why I'm so interested with the theme of tell your story. Um, and so to get back on track as to the marketing scheme, it's um an outlet to go meet with business owners for them to mm -hmm. share their story, right? Fuck me. I don't want to talk about insurance. It's boring as fuck. Um, I may be very good at it, but I'll be very honest with you. It's a fucking the most boring business you could ever think about getting involved in in your life. But but at the same time of me sharing a story of an entrepreneur, I'm in my apparel. I'm in my hat. I'm in my... And, and you know, people... I'm surprised people... But you made me. it cool. You made it interesting. Uh, yeah, people... I get these are the kind of message I get. Hey, Jude... My wife and I gained 30 pounds after eating all the, all these restaurants you've been reviewing. By the way, we need life insurance. Can you help us out with this? <laughs> right? And so, you know, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and I can't tell you how happy that makes me because that says, you know what, Jude? 
all this fucking hard work you put in and it works because what people don't realize, right? Outside people right now in the insurance space, they're like, what is this fucking guy doing? He's an insurance broker. Why is he eating at these restaurants? Ready? Everyone I'm sitting with is a business owner and entrepreneur mindset. Hey, asshole. Every week I go out there and record, it actually costs me fucking money. Every week. I pay a team to follow me with fucking cameras and edit. It costs me money. Right? So I'm not, not only am I out there doing it for fun, it is a financial burden to it. Right. Secondly, it's clever marketing that's going to take time to pay off. I'm not looking for immediate gratification. And I actually did the reverse. A lot of people are out there marketing to earn business. I've decided to go out there and market after having an established business where I'm not looking for business. But I am looking to help good people if they're looking to do But I don't do it for that reason. You follow what I'm saying? I'm out there doing it because it's fun. It gives me an outlet to showcase a business that's in my community. And great things happen from it. If that makes any sense, that's unique. No, it does. I love that. It's really in line with like the, the go giver mentality, like yeah. the whole you know this. We threw the, the deals and dollars event in when was that March March last year twenty twenty three, and Eric honestly came up with this. Like it was all centered around the go giver mentality, which is the idea of trying to provide as much value, expecting nothing in return. Right, trying to put as many good people, you know, good people in the right environment, provide just as much value to one another, all between us and. You know, not have your hand and good, out and good say... Good things well, I mean, it's yeah. the same thing you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, listen, as this isn't something new for me. I've never been numbers-driven. I've always been behaviors-driven. I've probably said this on at least 10 videos already um, that I've recorded in the past. I'm a behaviors-driven individual, and I believe when you focus on behaviors, numbers follow without question. So I've never been the guy to say, how many policies have we wrote this month? How much premium did we increase this year? I don't do it. I do the behaviors, and at the end of the month, I'm like, oh, not so fucking bad, mm-hmm. right? Just by following good behaviors. Mm-hmm. I did the same thing at J.P. Morgan Chase, and I had a really good mentor. My uh, my my manager at the time said, "You don't don't focus on your numbers." Even though Chase was very laser focused on the numbers, but his philosophy was just do what you need to do every day. This is what you do. I'll share what you would do. do this every day, and he goes, "I promise you, your numbers will follow." Needless to say, I took his guidance at a young age, and I was number three in the country. In the country. At all of J.P. Morgan? In, in my role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my that's lane. The, yeah, but that's number still... three in the country. I never locked in, oh, I'm almost in number three, number two. No, I woke, uh, every day I woke up, I went in there, and I did the behaviors that I was supposed to do every single day. And then the results just, they, 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 uh, they reveal themselves. I mean... Mm-hmm. Again, people complicate things. Like, I really think the formula of everything we do is extremely simple. Um, The formula, right? But you have to work hard. You have to be dedicated. You know, people think they could commit to something at 40, 50% and get the results that we get. It's just, it's not possible. It's not possible. You got to go all in. Yeah, you got to go all Mm -hmm. in. It's not possible, man. You got to, you got to be really fully committed. What, what made you, I guess, I mean, it sounds like you're crushing at your job, making probably good money, right? <clears throat> what made you say, you know what, I'm taking a chance. I'm going to get into this insurance business. Uh, even though it's boring, I'm going to make it fun. I'm going to make it cool. I'm going to do my own thing. What, what made you do that? Uh, well, I mean, so there's, there's a gap that I'm leaving out. When I left J.P. Morgan, I went and worked with my buddy doing exterminating um, for $150 a day, killing rats in Manhattan. What? Yeah, and, and true story, and I'm... I'm, I'm I was embarrassed to share this at one point. Now I'm proud to share it. But I would go home and cry to my wife at night a, a handful of times a week just because I I was just, you know, I was lost. I was depressed. And I was like, you know, but I had to work. We had a, um, I believe we, we just had the baby, right? We had my youngest daughter, Serena. And so for me, you know, 150 times five or six days a week was enough to at least just pay the mortgage and buy food at the time. So you had to do what you had to do. How but, old um, are you at the time? 35. No. Yeah, thir- 30, uh, 2015, so you took a nine years ago. Nine minus 41. 32? 32. 32. 30. I think the age, to be exact, was 33 at the time. And uh, so I started doing insurance in in combination while I was exterminating. And then, you know, then there was a day where... The insurance like, took over. Yeah, and I was like, wow, okay. You know, I was hopeful to do five policies a month and then five turned into five a week and then 
turned into five a day. And then, you know, and then I was like, told my friend is one of my best friends at Grove. I said, thanks for everything, bro. You know, I really appreciate it. I think that this is my, my, my calling at this time. And then I just, you know, I went into it, but man, listen, you know, and that's why I talk, talk, tell people like, you know, I don't get caught up in the money. I don't get caught up in the materials. I know what it's like to have nothing. I don't come from anything. Um, and I know how hard those days were and I know how heavy they weighed on my shoulders. Um, and I never want to feel that way ever again. And I think that's why I wake up and I fucking give it everything I got every day. Cause those days are far more scary than anything. Right. I don't ever want to feel that way. Um, so, but a lot of people don't know that, uh, you know, listen, we all, we all carry something with us every day. Only right. we know what that feels like, you know? Um, but I, I'm super blessed to have guys that have been by my side for a long time, such as Matt and his brother Sam. They've always been by my side. I worked with Sam for a long time in Chase. And, um, you know, having a good support system and people who believe in you has definitely been helpful. Um, but again, you Dude, know. Thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. What do you, like, what's going... Because I, I feel like a lot of people are so afraid of getting to that spot that you were at yeah. that, that they'll never even... They'll never even put themselves in a situation where they like never take the leap. Never, never. take the leap. So yeah. like you're you're probably doubting yourself. You know, you get, it sounds like you had a kid on the way, um, or you just had a kid married. Probably didn't feel great. Like what's going through your head at the time? You're like how like how are you getting up every day and just putting in the work that? Yeah, honest. I, I I you know I think mentally, a few, a lot has happened since then. I'm older. I've become more wiser. So I've taken a lot more knowledge. So the way I'm thinking today is a lot different than I was at 33. So that definitely helps, right? Um, but um, I don't. I don't think there's really like a one size fits all answer because everyone handles things differently. Um, you know, I don't like to preach. You know, I don't want to sit here and say I'm this like, you know, tremendous Catholic slash Christian, but. Um, there was a point where I just put my faith in God's hands and, and said, you know, I'm going to wake up and do the best I can every day. And I'm going to trust that God's going to lead me in the right direction. Wow. You could call it whatever you want. You could call it faith, God, whatever you want. But there just comes a certain point where it's like, there's only so much you can give to your day. Yeah. You know, that's amazing, bro. It's when you're on your knees and everything is shattered and nothing is working when a man comes to God. Yeah. And when you ha when you know God's got your back despite how bad everything is, yeah. It's like you're walking with like every bone and cell in your body is just unstoppable. That's so I, I appreciate you sharing that, man. Not yeah. a lot of people come on here and tell the audience just how bad life was at a certain point in time. Uh, but it's those moments that make you the man you are today. Yeah, that's that's no question, man. And you know, I share this with you guys because hopefully this is a good takeaway for you guys. But at 41, um, my focus point every day I wake up, um, first off, and my wife knows this too, first thing I do, I wake up. I'm, I'm t telling God how grateful I am. When people say, how are you? I, I tell them the truth. I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm healthy. I'm walking. I'm breathing. Everything else is up to me. Right? That's just the truth. You guys could say, anyone could say this guy's just preaching. Uh, no, it's not preach. It's truth. If I'm healthy and I'm capable, the rest is on me, yeah. right? And so, you know, I, I share this uh, with very few people. But when I go to church on Sunday and, um, and I pray, all I ask at this point in my life, and this is very different from 10 years ago, I say, God, uh, please just um, um, shield my family. Make sure my hand family stays safe and healthy. That is all I ask for you. The rest I know you've given me the ability to do. Think about it. It's not a matter of opinion. That's an actual fact. I love that. Yeah, no, me too. I feel like a lot of people, you know, that maybe are listening, you know, that maybe they're going through that that time where it's like, you know, they're putting in the work. Maybe they don't see the results. The results take a while, right? Like the yeah, man. Quick results don't last long. Right. Long results last long. You know, everyone's looking for that. That they they want to read that book. They want to read that quote. This is going to fix my life. Mm -hmm. No, you fucking fix your life. You. And you might you might go through six m dark months. You might go through six dark years. But, you know, if you have faith and you have uh, uh, the the willpower, you, you come out of it, you know. And, and, and let's talk about the word success. Let's define success. 
people are fixated on the word success. Like success means you have a Mercedes Benz, a Rolex, your own business. No, 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 no. Everyone's fucking wrong. Success is literally defined by one person reaching the desire that they wanted to reach. If your goal was to be the manager of McDonald's and you've made it, you are fucking successful. Right. Let's be honest. If your dream was to be uh, an eighth grade math teacher, you're successful. And so I, I get bothered by people defining success based on monetization. Because I can also show you a handful of fellas that make millions of dollars a year and are the most miserable fucking people you've ever met in your life. And they're unhappy. So is that success? Fair? Yeah, absolutely fair. So I think finding a good balance of what you really enjoy doing while making money. Mm -hmm. right? Joey, let me ask you a question, brother. Over the, la over the last seven years building this business you got how many kids two two daughters okay, two daughters congratulations that's Thank amazing you. um two daughters how many hours a week are you putting into this thing <laughs> uh, well honestly maybe 90 100 i don't wow know. i don't i don't even know I, I i'll tell you this i don't count but it's it's nowhere near fucking 40 nowhere near 40 yeah, I'm not one of those guys gonna come on and curse. Ah, oh, fucking no. But these these fucking these people today, they don't fucking get it. They don't get it. They think, oh, nine to five, I'm gonna be a millennial millionaire. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> true. It's true. So true. It is true. I, I, I work more hours in a fucking day than these fucking <laughs> in a month. It's true. <laughs> I, I'm gonna ask you uh, a selfish question. All right, you got two kids. You got a wife at home. I don't know if your wife works or what she does, but. You know, obviously, you're working your ass off to, you know, provide for the family. I The word balance for me kind of freaks me out because it's like, I don't really want balance. I want, like, my family to be involved in the business and, like, kind of have everything work together. And they, you know, they, they know what's going on in the business. If the business is doing good, they feel good about it. They're, they're aware. But part of me does, I mean, I, I have a fiance, I have a kid on the way. I have to figure out a little bit of semblance of balance. I tried to turn my phone off at eight o'clock at night. That don't, that doesn't work. It's it's never gonna work. So what like how do you how do you how do you manage it right? How do you keep everybody happy? Uh, it's tough. It's very tough. Um, I'm trying really hard to do that more now. Um, I'm actually interviewing with coaches, and I think that's a big step for me in my life right now. Um, because. Uh, you know, realizing you're just never too good at what you do. There's always good to have outside. So I, I don't really know the the right answer to that. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's ever a perfect balance. I think we strive to find a little bit more of that perfect balance every day. I don't think we ever find that perfect balance, but I think we work towards improving that balance every day. If that makes sense. I mean, look, I'm 41, so I'm working harder and harder and improve myself and my balance for myself and my family and my, my business every day. Um, I, I think as an entrepreneur, it's something that we'll always struggle with. If, yeah. if I'm being honest, I think it's something we'll always struggle with. I don't think there's any, I haven't met a lot of people who have that answer. Um, you know, quite a few people in my circle who do very, very well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they have all the coaching support in the, in that they can ever ask for the world and and i think that they still strive to find that every day mm -hmm. and that's something too as a side note i want to touch on because you're you're i don't know a lot of people like you that are so that are so willing to help and so you know you invited me to one of your friends parties beautiful party at a great time you were introducing me to everybody some of which a couple people two people i talked to a couple times a week now that help me with a lot of different things right i called you one day called one day with clint because clint's insurance got dropped, he needed help. Jude was probably busy as fuck, and he dropped what he was doing, and he, you know, he was absolutely helping Clint, whether it was going to result in business or not. Like, there's just not a lot of people like that, so I'm very grateful to, you know, I feel like everybody in this room is like that, but I want to yeah. just, well, I you mean, know. Um, I'm willing to do that when I feel like someone's a good person, right? And so not to stroke you on the fucking air, but I think you're a good guy, so, <laughs> you know. Johnny boy. Johnny, you are a good man. So, <laughs> 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 Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, Johnny. No, but Great you man. Know, yeah, listen, I, I, lo I, lo I, lo I love helping people who deserve help. You're a shit bag. I watch you burn. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to stay on that. <laughs> I got a question too. Um, this is probably like a loaded question, but what's? I, I'm only asking this because one of my good friends, uh, she 
literally has been telling me the last few weeks she's going to take her test and she wants to become an insurance broker. And she actually called me today when I was sitting in your office and she said, I don't know that I totally want to do this. And I was like, I actually said you should talk to my friend Jude. Yeah. Um, but m my question is, what's the, what's, what's the, what's the thing that you love most about your job? Right. And I'm sure that's a loaded question, but what do you, what's the thing you love the most? The Listen, I, I, again, the restaurants. I, 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 yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, um, what's the word? I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna be brutally honest here, and I, I've said it in passing earlier in the in the episode. Um, insurance sucks, man. Mm -hmm. It really does. You know, I think that I just it does. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible business. It's a terrible. It's a stressful business. But I think I'm really lazy being focused on saying that just because. We're probably in the worst stage of the market in the insurance industry ever. Now, there are people who are older than me who have been in the insurance business far longer than me who have even shared with me and said, Jude, we've never seen it as bad as it is today, right? What, so is, going, what is going well, on? Well, the market's bad, just like interest rates and all that. And we could, we could, we, we could dive a little deeper into that. But I, th I guess the reason why my answer might not be the best answer today <clears throat> is just because of where the market sits today. Rates today are 300% above where they were 24 months ago. And think about the frustration that I have to take a, hand, a, a couple hundred calls a month to explain the same scenario over and over and over again. Oh, my gosh. So why are, why are rates bad? When there's a hurricane in Florida, people think, well, it happened in Florida. What the fuck does that have to do with me here in New York? Well, asshole, let me explain to you finance. The same company who insures you here in New York also insures all these people in Florida. And they paid out a few billion dollars. So do you think it fucking affects you here? You're fucking damn right it affects you here. All the jerk-offs on the cell phones and driving and getting into car accidents in their fancy cars, there's a big cost there, right? Um, and then the market is bad. So the cost to purchase, people, what people don't understand, insurance companies are financial institutions. They're money guys. Insurance companies are the smartest guys in the industry when it comes to money. Yes. They manage risk, right? So do you think that they just magically came up with this new fucking number today and said, this is what you're paying? No, they did fucking analytics, statistics, the actuaries involved. The rates today have gone up so quickly, so rapidly in a short period of time, and people are not adapting and understanding and my, my, my response to all the people out there today is if you think plain, plain airfare, mortgage rates, real estate, food, clothing, all that shit went up. But insurance, no. That should be the one thing that stayed the fucking same. Right. Good fucking job, guys. <laughs> Very fucking clever. <laughs> Very clever. You know? It's just, it's just, it's not rocket science. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um... If anyone wants to get into the insurance industry today, I'm going to say it. You could fucking play this, record it, cut it up, chop it up. Worst time to get into the fucking business. You will not last. Wow. It, you won't. It but won't last. If you make it through this, on the flip side, won't rates last. come to <clears throat> Won't last. Only people who are going to make it through this. Only people who are going to make it through this are people who have portfolios of clients already and who could sustain a two, three, and four year very difficult time. You're done. I promise you, you're done. New insurance, no shot, no shot. How Unless, long? Does it, how long does it take for? Because I, I, I guess I hear, you know, a lot of times, you know, there, there's hurricanes. You have a bad season, rates go up, it, go, it goes crazy, uh, costs go up, but then it comes back down usually, right? So they're hoping to see a shift in the right direction. Again, this is what higher level people in the insurance industry are saying. They're hoping by twenty five, twenty six, for things to start leveling back which it realistically will come fast. It's not like it's 10 years from now. But, you know, for someone brand new getting into the business, it's you're done unless, unless you have a unique situation. You're someone coming into the business. You have a very high net worth circle of influence people that are willing to work with you. You're going to write high profitable items such as life and commercial. You have a shot. You're going to come in. You're going to write auto and home. Don't waste your fucking time. Go bag groceries in Target and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, that's, I'm sorry, but like, I'd rather people be honest. No, me, no, no, right? 100%. That's the truth, you know? That's crazy. I'm an experienced broker in business seven years. I almost don't even write auto insurance anymore. Not worth it. 
Well, you answered my next question. I was going to say, if somebody told you they wanted to get into insurance, what, what, what piece of advice would you have? And I guess the advice is don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do not. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, listen, again, just, just being really, really honest. You know? Um, what's happened in the last 12 to 24 months has forced me to kind of adapt and shift my entire focus. So, What's the focus now? Just commercial life, working with entrepreneurs, business clients, people who really understand business. Mm. People are not going to fucking question every single move you make because they get it, right? H higher level clientele. Listen, my commercial clients <laughs> don't fucking call me every week. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? They're businessmen. Yeah. First off, they don't have the time to make that they're call. They're too busy to Secondly, call you. they understand it. Right. You follow what I'm saying? If they're calling you, they have a real situation. Look, I don't know if you guys heard this in the past. I'm sure you have. And I, and I could say it incorrectly, there's that 80-20 rule, mm -hmm. right? Where you spend 80% of your time working on, see, I'm, I'm already, I'm already you fucking You always up. say it. What yeah, yeah. It's, it's like 80% of your time is spent making you 20% of the money, and 20% of right. your time is making you 80% of the money. That statement is the truest statement so true. in the world. Because if you peel back your portfolio, you say, 20% of my clients make up 80% of my revenue and don't bother me, Right. right? And the people who make up 20% of my revenue are 80% of my portfolio mm. and take up my entire day. And uh, as a business person, if you really start to understand that, you shift your focus. You're like, why am I giving these people my attention? Mm -hmm. I make 20% of my revenue from them. They take up my whole day. Yep. These people who deserve all my time don't ever call me, right? So you deepen the relationship with the high profitable clients, the clients that value what you do. Deepen that relationship. Well, I, I think that, you know, in our business, it's super obvious. For you, at least, I'm sure, you know, the guys that are doing the $50 million deals, they, they don't, you don't spend your entire day, like, it's a clean deal, mm -hmm. broker, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the guys doing 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar deals, they're not, you know, they're not, they're not complaining like somebody who's doing a $400,000 refi and is mad that their mortgage, because the rate's an eighth of a point higher, their payment's fucking $36 higher a month. Yeah. Like, we're, you know, right. And we, we did the same on the lending business. You know, we were doing a ton of bridge loans, but we're making all of our money on, on the rental loans. Yeah. We were making three times as much and, and the bridge loans are impossible to underwrite and the guidelines change and it's really hard. It's like, yeah. why don't we just go all in on rental? Loans? And, and look, just for the record, just to throw this out there on the air. And this, this, this is a blanket statement, even for, 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 for what you guys do in your respective lanes in your industry. This is not a statement to all the clients to say, hey, you're a pain in the ass. We don't want to work with you. It's to say, hey, we run a business. We work really hard. We are fucking human. We deal with stress just like you do. Cut us a fucking break. That's what this statement is. It's not we're too good for you. It's like, hey, if your fucking auto rate went up $12 a month, don't call me fucking cursing me. I have nothing to do with it. I'm not Warren Buffett. I'm fucking Jude Romano, the insurance guy. <laughs> Oh, that's cold. That's I a great clip, yeah, Josh. That that's a good clip. That's that a ripper. That's a ripper. This is uh, this is great. You guys are. Gr I'm, I'm, and this is from my heart. This is truth right here. I'm excited to watch all of where you fellas will be in the next 36 months, next five years, ten years. I'm excited to see where you guys. I mean, I could kind of envision where you guys will be, but I'm excited to see it because I know just from being. 12, 13, whatever it is, years older than you boys. I know where my mind was at at your age, and I know where it is now. And I, from the outside looking in, think that you fellas are so far ahead of your peer group for your age. So I'm so excited to see where you guys are going to be in the next five years. Appreciate that. I yeah, really appreciate, appreciate that. that yeah. no, I, I got goosebumps when you said that. It's awesome. D brother, you're, you're, you're the man. You are the GOAT, actually. You are the GOAT. I, I don't, I mean, I think that's, unless you've got other questions, Dave. Look, um, <clears throat> we're going to wrap this thing up. We're a little over time now, but Jude, you came on here. Um, you're an inspiration. Whenever I see your Instagram, it's an inspiration. You came here, and honestly, even before the podcast started recording, the level of positivity, the inspiration, like what you're doing for your health, what you're doing for your wealth, what you're doing for your employees and your family – is just incredible. And so, dude, we're, we're all here rooting for you, man. And we know you're going to hit that $30 million exit in t when, you're, when you're 50 years old. And, and just like you're excited for us, we're excited for you, bro. Thank you so much for making it on the podcast. 
if the people need insurance from the GOAT, where can they find you? So you could go to the insurancegoat.com, but where you would probably find a little bit more humor is going to the insurance goat on Instagram, right? So how do we call the handle? It's at the insurance goat, right? Mm-hmm. At the insurance goat. And my, my, my takeoff message to everyone, well, first of all, boys, love you guys. Thank you for having love me. You, you. The fact that we won overtime is a fucking blessing. That means we were all talking about great shit. My two takeaways are uh, winners stay with winners. Let's keep winning and keep fucking going. That's it. Amen. Let's go. Nice. <laughs>